Welcome back. Tripoli's only function in airports is reopened following its one, uh, its one, For its one-week closure due to militia fighting in the Libyan capital, the move comes after a ceasefire between rival factions was announced. Libya's transport minister says flights will resume gradually as a fragile ceasefire is still holding, which encouraged airport officials to restart operations. Over a week of fierce fightings between rival groups saw stray ground missiles land near the airport on a private property, which led to the airport's closure. More than 60 people died in the clashes and over 100 people were injured. Over to our Africa Tech segment now. With several challenges confronting elections on the continent, African countries have continued to search for solutions in hopes of overcoming them, and technology seems like a stray of hope. Increasingly, many African countries are relying on technological solutions in the administration and management of elections. We have with us Jerry Ayodile, a digital analyst, to discuss more on this. Hello, Jerry. Thanks for joining us on the program. How has technology enhanced the election process? So, the way I see it is technology has completely changed how we see elections from the time a candidate basically says he wants to run to, you know, mobilizing people, social media and all that. But in the nitty gritty, so the, basically the electoral process itself, we're going from actual man manual ballot boxing saying, okay, here I am, this is my name, to actual PVCs having a sort of a barrier system saying this is who you say you are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we technology has basically made the election processes more efficient, made voting faster than it used to be, voter reconciliation, the numbers, all of that, streaming the results. All those things have become easier to do. These things are now safer. In a sense, we'll get to that as we move forward. But these things are safer now than they were maybe 20, 30 years ago. Mm. That's re-voting. Okay. In what areas do you think we can use tech to improve more? I'd say the entire process. So I would start with the sort of for locally, our PVC, the registration, that entire process. There is a lag in efficiency. We'll have people saying they waited six, seven hours to input, like manually input their data, having to write, fill that out. Things that you could, we could have easily done digitally, where people just come and they do their fingerprint as well and we move. Um, also, so from actual physical ballot boxes, we should not still be using physical paper ballot boxes. I mean, some, you know, budget constraints and things like that. We shouldn't still be using physical ballot boxes. The, uh, a digital solution means less waste, l l reducing cost. Um, basically, a quicker run through of the entire process, digital solutions will basically take uh, a normal solution and make it quicker, make it faster. So mm -hmm. taking all those sort of archaic methods of counting votes, taking votes, accumulating votes, and transporting those votes, because the ballots, transporting those physical ballots is a problem. Um, we've had in the past where ballot boxes are handled by suspicious ind individuals, um, causing you know, discrepancies, people saying, oh no, the ballot boxes were taken. But a digital solution that quite literally is synced to the cloud instantly. So you take your vote, you cast your vote, and that's it. You go away, and you don't have any worrying thoughts that I voted for X candidate, and who knows whether you be candidate as I had uh, thugs to come and take the ballot boxes. So there's that. But well, is it really safer? Because it's open to more hackers. So, you know. I think with hacking, there's people say, oh my God, we've been hacked. There are more safe options now for encoding your information, so encryption, 32-bit, um, 64-bit encryption. It is almost still always safer. Yeah, I, I, the example I would give is, you know, going on a plane, people say, oh, my God, I'm so scared. Well, you're more likely to die in the car, but, you know, mm -hmm. but because it's, we're closer to the ground, we feel safer, safer. So I think it's the same thing with hacking. Of course, there's been high-profile hacks, but the inverse of that is still doing the old way and still mm -hmm. having people basically duplicating the physical ballots. So I think if we, if we shy away from, you know, technological advances because we were sort of scared, it's a disservice to everyone. Mm -hmm. So the politicians who want to run and the people who are casting their honest, uh, the people who have made time out of their days to cast their votes, I think we would have to be braver to say, okay, well, these are the risks. Every policy, every new invention, every new innovation has risks. So mm -hmm. 
taking that risk that, in, that, is, that is involved in you know, digital solutions is one that I think is worth taking. Okay, so apart from that, are there any other challenges that, you know... I, could... I, I'd say funding. You know, as, 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 as great, as wonderful as it, it is to say we should completely do everything tech, everything should be digital, is where is that money going to come from? Um, in 2015 elections, we spent about 105 billion naira on mm -hmm. an election with, only, let's say, about 63 million registered voters. And as we know, registered voters, the number reduces to actual people who actually go to vote on that day. So it is immensely expensive right now to, you know, to... to conduct elections. It's, it's expensive, but we, and it then says it's kind of counterproductive to say we need to spend more money in these elections. But I think if we invest right now in these solutions, invest really, again, invest money, invest time, you know, creating policies that mean that we do have to do these things, we will find that in the long run, we'll, it, there will be savings in the long run. But these challenges are infrastructure-wise. How do you get people who, some people might not be computer literate at all to you know, basically then use high-tech solutions just for voting and then they go back to their normal lives where mm -hmm. they don't interact with computers on a daily basis. So there's, there, there are challenges, but I think not enough for us to okay. let go of advancement in technology yeah. with regards to Thank elections. you, Jerry Ayodele, for joining us on the program. It was a pleasure speaking with Thank you. you. Let's take you to Kenya's capital, Nairobi now, where fashion designer Skola Namwai is breaking new ground with her body and costume designs. According to her, her designs are not just clothes, they are art. Take a look. It looks so nice. Meet Skola Namwai, Kenya's sensational fashion designer. The 28-year-old who lives and works in Nairobi says she hopes to change the way the world looks at fashion in the East African country. Namwe, who creates intricate costumes for special occasions, theatre performances, and most recently film, says she gets her ideas from real stories and fantasies. Most of the things I make, I basically do it from scratch. I paint my, I design my my prints, and I paint some of them. It's very personal, and everything has an inspiration. I don't wake up in the morning and copy designs from uh, Fashion 101 or, or magazines. I always have an inspiration for everything I make and there's a story behind every design. This particular pink dress she's wearing was inspired by environmentalist and Nobel Prize laureate Wangari Mathai and her love for nature. It was chosen as one of the looks for the top 40 contestants of the Miss World pageant in 2016. She loved trees so much that every time she was in the mood to celebrate, she would plant a tree. And she would not just plant any tree, she would plant a tree called the Nandi flame. And the Nandi flame is an indigenous tree which has this beautiful red, orange, yellowish flowers that when the tree is in flower, it looks like it's, it's in flame. So that is where I got my inspiration. So I called my collection the flower of the Nandi flame, which is inspired by Wangari Madai. Namwe's latest project was leading the costume design team for award-winning Kenyan film, Supermodo. A story about a terminally ill girl whose only escape is her dream of becoming a superhero. That's it on the program. Thanks for watching. I'm Teniola Shibuele.